Hey, Larry. Hey, Caesar. What are you guys up to? Oh, you don't look so good. I think you're eating too much candy. Yeah, too much. Did you get into your Halloween candy? Oh, my. Did you eat a lot of it? Did you eat all of it? I only had two pieces. You only had two pieces. You've got the whole bucket in front of you, Larry. Really? How about we just see how much Halloween candy Leary's had, shall we, Caesar? Uh, uh, please, no. Yes. No, don't, 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 no. Uh, oh, oh, look. Oh, look. Look at it all fall out of you. Look at this. This is disturbing. You, you, didn't, even, <laughs> you didn't even take it out of the wrappers. Look, even Millie's all excited. Millie wants to know if she can have some Halloween candy. She can have the chocolate. But No, she can't have chocolate. Oh, sorry. Have the chocolate. Sorry. And if she were to eat that much candy... She'd be as sick as Larry, as, I'm sorry, as a Caesar is. Wouldn't you, Millie? Here, Caesar, have more chocolate. Yeah, no, 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 no more chocolate. Okay, you know what I think? I think that since you've got such a bad stomach ache, Caesar, that we ought to go tuck you in for a little bit of a nap. You, you ought to be able to hibernate now for, Millie, get down, please. You ought to be able to hibernate for quite some time, at least till tomorrow. So let's get you a Tums, and we'll get you a pillow and your blankie. And pizza. And, and uh, No, no, pizza. That's not good on your tummy right now. Maybe tomorrow, okay? And you can go lay down, and I'll work on my craft while you're sleeping. Shall we do that? All right, we're going to pause the video here so we can go tuck you in. Okay, Larry, so it's just us now. We've got Caesar down for his long winter's nap of sorts. Do you think he'll feel better by morning? Um, yes, I, th I think you'd be better by like an hour. Well, I hope so. But I thought in the meantime, since you guys had so much fun creating your costumes, I mean, Caesar looked great looking like me, and I didn't see your cameraman costume, but I'm sure you looked fabulous. Oh, that's great. But I thought maybe we could make a quick and easy costume here at home. What do you think? What kind of costume? Well, I thought we could make a superhero costume, because today I'm going to be a superhero. Like Super Larry? Like Super Larry. That's me. Awesome. You can be super leery. Epic. And look, we can make you a super mask so you can be in disguise without your sunglasses on. And it even comes with a cape. Although mine says SG for super stupendous girl. Stupendous but girl. we can make it SL for super leery. Would you like that? How about we make it EL for exquisite leery? Exquisite leery. That's we a can, big word. We could do something like that. But you could be a superhero. Do you like that idea? Yes. All right. Well, I'm going to set you off here on the side so that I can work without getting you all messed up. Shall we do that? Yes. Here, we'll even have you sit on top of your Halloween Oh, yay. Wait. So you can okay. see better. Okay. Ooh. Let me help you here. Yes. There you go, I'm crippled. That? No, you're not crippled. You just don't want you to fall down. Okay. How's that? So, what we're going to need to do to make our capes, this is how the cape looks all extended out. Look how long that is. Is that a big cape for you? Um, maybe a bit, but I'm sure I'll grow into it. I'm sure you'll grow into it. Absolutely. Okay, so there's the cape, and here's the mask, and I'm going to show you how to make that. The first thing you are going to work on is going to be the cape, because that is the easiest of these crafts to do. And if you come to the Her Memorial Library in Mifflinburg, we have this kit all put together for you with directions on how to do it, and all the materials that you'll need. But if you can't make it to our library, you can still make this craft kit at home. All you're going to need is a pillowcase. You can get these at any dollar store. They're really expensive. They're only a dollar each. We got a satin one so that our cape is all shiny, but if you want to use an old pillowcase that you have laying around at home, you can do that too. Then you're going to need about a yard of ribbon. We found some sparkly ribbon for our superhero cape, um, but any again, any kind of ribbon will work. And then you're just going to need some fabric paint or some um, fabric markers, something to go ahead and decorate your cape with. And you're going to need either fabric glue or tacky glue. And that's what we'll need to make just the cape. And to get started on that, we're going to take our pillowcase out of its package here. And we'll throw away the packaging. And you want to open it up and get it all nice and extended. And then we want to turn it inside out. Do you think you can handle that, Larry? Um, yeah, it's a big pillowcase. It is a big pillowcase. If you want to go as a ghost for Halloween, you could do this too. You could just cut eye holes in the middle and you're done. See? Spooky ghost. But since we're going to be a superhero, we're going to keep going. You want to make sure the pillowcase is completely inside out, which means you want to bring these corners completely out. And get your seam, your seam nice and tight. So you're going to have the whole pillowcase extended 
inside out. But you only need to work with the what would be the bottom inside of it here where it's folded and it seams here. You want to leave the open part of the case hanging free. Why does it have to be inside out? Well, because we're going to put the ribbon that's going to go around it on the inside. Oh. So, I don't know about some people, but I have two kinds of scissors in my house. My kids all know it. We have our regular everyday scissors and mom's sewing scissors. Can we use mom's sewing scissors on anything other than fabric, Larry? No. No. On penalty of death. I mean, we can, but... These used to be mom's sewing scissors, and then somebody used them on paper, and they were no longer good for sewing. It wasn't me. It better not. It's probably Caesar. Probably. Probably. So we're going to go ahead and use these for when we're cutting paper, and these for when we're cutting fabric. And the first thing that we're going to do is take our, our uh, pillowcase here, and in the corner, we need to take about an inch cut of the corner off just like so you don't want to take very much off just about an inch slice and you want to do the exact same thing over here so you get like a little triangle piece when you are all done and again just another inch so you have two matching triangles now you have options you like options um only when they're good options options are great so you can use your fabric glue your tacky glue or even your hot glue gun. And you can run a strip of glue right across the top here. And then you can adhere your ribbon. And the best way to adhere your ribbon is to find the middle point. So you want to fold your ribbon completely in half and find the midpoint. And then that's going to be glued right here in the center of your cape. And then that will determine that you have the same amount of tie sticking out of each end on both sides. That way your cape is what we call symmetrical. I know, pretty cool. Epic. Now, if you don't want to glue it in there, and that's fine too, because everybody can do it their way, you can just loosely lay it on top, and then make sure you tuck your ends in through that slit that we just made. But make sure that you don't pull on your ribbon so that it gets off symmetry. You want to make sure that it's equal. And then we're going to go ahead and tuck it in on this side too. And now, oh, I didn't quite get it in there. It can be a little tricky, so be patient. You want to just tuck your ends. Sometimes you need to fold your ribbon like in half maybe a little bit to tuck it in there. That's okay too. There we go. And get it in there like so. Then you want to take your pillowcase and you want to turn it right side out again. Which is why gluing it is kind of nice because then you know your ribbon won't go anywhere. When you have your pillowcase turned right side out, I gotta find my ends here. Come all the way up to the top here. And your ribbons will be peeking out of your corners, unless they fell back in, which mine just did. So we're going to have to turn it right back side out again so that I can weave it back through. Or we can find the other end. There it is. There it is. There's my other end. Just like that. And you can see how it comes out like so. And then we'll just take my other end here and we'll poke it through too. Because I did not glue my ribbon in to save time. It does take time. You have to let the glue dry unless you're using a hot glue gun. You have to let the glue dry before you can turn your cape inside out. So now you have your strings for your cape all the way through. And then you need to decorate. So this is now the top of your cape. So if you're going to do designs and everything, you have to keep in mind that this is the top and the open part of your pillowcase is going to be the bottom of your cape. So if we we're going to decorate um, our cape, we'd want to use our paints and we'd want to write like super Oh, you wanted to be exquisite, Larry, right? Exquisite. We could write exquisite Larry on here. And we can use our paint. I, I had chosen for um, the other one that I did. We did puffy paint. And you can see how it kind of jumps off the fabric and it feels kind of cool. Do you want to feel that, Larry? Um, here, I'll come over and help you here so you can reach yes, and feel. Yes, I'm weak. I know. See? How's well, that feel? It feels feel? so nice. It's kind of bumpy, isn't it? Um, very bumpy. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But it's nice. And it kind of pops right out. 
so that um, people can really see that you are exquisite Larry. Satisfactory. That's right. It's very satisfactory. So I, re I do recommend the puffy paint. Um, it's kind of cool. I'm not actually going to do that in this video on my one that we've been making here just because it does take 12 hours to dry. And I don't think you want to watch 12 hours of my craft videos. So we're going to not do that step in this tutorial. Caesar would. I, I know Caesar would. So at any rate, so that's how you put it on and do your design. If you're not sure how you want it to look, sketch it out on a piece of paper first and then transfer your, your paper um, sketching to your actual pillowcase. You can also use fabric markers. I do not recommend using regular markers because they will wash out in the laundry if you ever need to launder your cape. Okay, so there is the cape. How simple is that? Do you want to try on the one I made earlier? Um, sure. Okay, we'll try on the cape. Ooh, this is scary. And we will just put a nice loose knot here. We don't want it too tight because, you know, sometimes you got to whip off your cape in a hurry. There, there's your superhero cape. Oh, what do you think? I feel powerful. You feel powerful? You can leap tall buildings in a single bound? Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, now we still need to disguise your, your face, though, because you're kind of recognizable. Uh, I think so we're good. So we need to make a superhero mask. And this, too, we have Nick kit at the library for you. And if you don't make it to the library, that's fine. You can still make our mask. Um, again, the only thing you're going to need this time is two pieces of felt. Now, we went with red and blue felt, but you may choose any colors you like. Um, we recommend that you make them about three and a half inches by about eight, eight and a half inches. This one's actually a little bit bigger than that. Um, and then we have a template here. It's a superhero mask printable. We printed this out for free from kidscbc2.ca, which is a Canadian website. So if you want to go to um, the internet and print off this template, you can do that. I will tell you, you'll need to shrink it on your printer because it came out huge. So for our purposes, we shrunk it down a little bit to make it so that the kids could print it off in their size. So you're gonna to wanna to take your paper scissors and you want to cut this template out. And after you've got that template cut out, this is what it looks like. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take some sewing pins. So kids, you're going to want to let your caregiver help with this. If you don't have sewing pins, that's fine. Get a marker and trace the entire template with a marker. But if you're not so inclined to want to trace everything with a marker, you can simply pin your template to the felt like a pattern for sewing. And then take your sewing scissors and cut all the way around. And then take your marker and trace the inside eye holes and cut those out too. And you end up with a blue um, mask. Now that's gonna be the top part. So how do we make the red part? We wanna make that a little bit bigger than the blue part. So the same thing, you can either trace it on the red or you can pin it onto the red and for our purposes here I'm going to pin it and this is where it gets a little bit tricky because we want the blue to sit on top of the red we have to draw a or cut a line that is about a quarter of an inch bigger than the actual template than what we have so as Miss Corey does that, you're going to need, um, if you're really good with scissors, kids, you can do this. Otherwise, have a parent or caregiver help. And as you can see, I'm going to cut them from the side. And I'm going to leave somewhere between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch around the edge of my pattern. I'm kind of eyeballing this. So if you're not really good at eyeballing it, go ahead and get a ruler out and your marker and do it that way. I don't always follow the exact guidelines for measurements. My kids will tell you that when I cook too, I'll say, oh, you'll know how much of something to put in the recipe. And they'll say, but mom, is it a cup? Is it two cups? Oh, you'll know. And they always give me a look. Okay, so here we go coming around the top here of our red mask. And we are almost to the edge. Makes kind of a nice little infinity symbol. For those of you that are into Avengers, do you like Avengers, Larry? Yes. Yes. So you're really excited about being a superhero then, huh? Yes. Okay, so now our red template, as you can see, will be bigger than our blue. See how cool that looks? That's awesome. But we still need to cut out the eyes because otherwise you're going to be looking in the dark. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our marker. And again, 
On the outside, we traced about a quarter of an inch bigger, but this time we want to go smaller. So we're going to come in about an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch smaller, and just trace some eye hole patterns here like this. And we're going to do this like that. And it, again, it doesn't have to be exact. There's no right or wrong way. We just want to leave enough of an edge so that when we put our mask on, it'll still show through. Now we're going to take our pins off and remove our template. And so that's kind of how it looks. It looks a little silly that way. So in order to cut these eye holes out without cutting through the fabric, we gently fold it in half. And then we just do a slight slit. And then I have a little hole in here that I can just slide my scissors through and cut to the edge of my line. And now I can cut my eyes out. Which sounds kind of silly, doesn't it, Larry? Am I actually cutting my eyes out? No, you're just cutting the eye holes of the mask. That's right. I think it would hurt if I tried cutting my eyes out. Not recommended. Not recommended. I don't even re recommend crying your eyes out. Okay, so here we go. That's one eye hole. And now we can do the other. Same way, we're going to fold it in half so I can make a little slit here. And then with that little slit, right there. I can cut to the edge and then come up and around and like so and coming back around here like this. Now when I put the two on top of each other you'll see that you even have a little bit of red on the inside where your eyes go. See how cool that looks? That is awesome. Now, if you can't do that step, if that's too hard or you forgot, that's okay too. It doesn't have to be perfect. Your mask can look any way you want it to look. The next step you need to do is you have to put a couple holes here so that we can attach your yarn. And that's simple enough too. Again, take your fabric scissors. And this is something that parents or caregivers should do and not kids because you're going to be cutting through the fabric and that might hurt. And you just kind of got to wedge the scissors through because it's felt, the fabric will give and you want to get a nice solid hole through the fabric. Can you see that? Um, can you see that, Larry? Yeah, I, I think the camera can see that too. Yeah, good. We have a substitute cameraman tonight, don't we? Yeah. He's doing a fine job. Okay, then you do the same thing on the other side, like so. And you want to make sure that you get all the way through, but try not to cut yourselves. Um, if you really struggle, again, you could fold it and then just do a little snip. And that will create a big enough hole for you to slide your scissors all the way through. So that's really what you're trying to do is to create a big enough hole to slide your scissors through. Then you're going to do the exact same thing on the red. I recommend for this step though, so that they line up ease, even, is to line your mask up the way you want it and then take your marker and put it through the hole of your blue and just touch the red. Again, put it through the hole of the blue and just touch the red. So when you lift it off, look, I have two little dots and that tells me where I need to puncture my next holes in. So again, I can come over here and just do a little slit so that I can get my um, scissors through. Another little slit. You don't want it to be very big at all and we can puncture it through. Okay, now we're going to put together our, our tie, our yarn. So we have about 18 inches of red yarn here. Again, if you're going to do a different color mask, you can get whatever color yarn you want. Here's a little threading trick that I learned a long time ago, back in the dark ages when I was in school. If you take a piece of clear tape and you tape it around the edges of the ends of your yarn and then fold it over, you can make what something is like an agate, which is the hard plastic piece on the end of your shoestring. Did you know that? No. Agate is your vocab word for the day. And then you can go to the underside of the red and you can push it through your hole like so. And there's your yarn. And then push it through the blue end too. You might need to pinch it a little bit to make it small enough and then pull it through there too. See how I did that, Larry? Yes. And then the same thing here. We're going to put another piece of tape on the end here. You can go to the very end of it 
You don't want to use too much of yarn up and twist it. Get nice and tight. Looks just like a shoelace now. And we're going to puncture this end now through our hole over here. And as you can see, you can see the little plastic. It helps you see it better too when you're using the same color yarn as your fabric. And then through the blue again. This is again so you just want to make sure that you can get your holes big enough. And puncture it through. I don't know, we may need to make my hole just a little bit bigger here. I had some trouble getting my yarn through. And here we go. There we go. Now it pops right through. See? All right. Now, so now we've got our string through. Now we need to glue these two felt pieces together. And maybe you're saying, why didn't you glue them together before? That's because I wanted you to be able to thread, thread your yarn through. So now you're going to take your tacky glue or your fabric glue or even your hot glue gun if you that's all you have. And you want to put enough glue on here so that it covers where the blue is going to go on the red. Especially your high stress points. Like around the edges of the eyes. And a little bit like this. There we go. And then just flip your blue back on top, just the way you wanted it to look. And you can pull your yarn through a little bit tighter too if you want. And get that attached, just like that. Okay, now we're going to tie off our string. You just want to wrap it around your finger and make a basic knot. And you're going to want to make sure you can move that knot as high up to that little homemade agate that you can get. And you're going to want to do that two or three times so you get a nice, solid, thick knot there. Um, you don't want your, your mask falling off your face when you're rescuing somebody in the middle of a crisis, do you, Larry? Um, no. That would be bad. I'll just wear my sunglasses. <laughs> Even at night? Yes. Okay, so you're going to do that on both sides. And then when you've got that done, you can actually take your scissors and you can cut the tape off and your string should stay on your mask. I guess it would help if I made that a little bit bigger. And one more time. Oops. There we go, just like that. So now I'm gonna trim off my plastic here. And we can pull the string from the back tight. And you can see that now it fits. Now, if you've got a small head like yours, Larry, I might have shortened my string a little bit. So, but since I was making this to show the kids, I made it regular size. We'll just shorten it up after we get it fitted to your face. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay, your last step, if you really want to make it superheroish, is to get some glitter glue. I like glitter glue because it doesn't make near the mess that regular glitter does. And you can just put some designs on. You can squeeze like some lines on here. Maybe you like to put some lightning bolts on. Maybe you want to put some geometric shapes on like a rectangle or a square. Maybe you want to put a big EL for ex uh, exquisite, right? How's yes. Say eccentric, but you're more exquisite. And on mine, we just made a design, and you can make a design too if you like. And then here again too, you're going to want to let your glitter glue dry for a good 12 hours. So once you've made these, these costumes, just let them dry. Let them sit and dry for overnight, a good 12 hours. And in the morning, you can play with your costume all you like. Would you like to try on the mask now too, Larry? Sure. Yeah. Uh. How about that, huh? Perfect fit. Yes, perfect fit. Now you're superhero Larry, huh? Yes. What do you think? I think you look great, Larry. Thanks for helping me make the craft tonight. Yeah, no problem. And I sure hope that we had fun, and I hope you've learned your lesson about eating too much Halloween candy in one sitting. Uh, it was, uh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> I hope so. And hopefully Caesar has too. I hope he feels better. All right, well, thank you, everybody. We hope you enjoyed this easy craft to make today. 
and we look forward to seeing you in our future videos. Have a nice night. Bye.